from the KMNN studios, this is the Kids Morning News Network. It's Friday, February 2nd, 2024. I'm Alex in the KMNN studio in New York. It's National Tater Tot Day. I'm guessing you don't need me to tell you what to do about that. Um, 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 um. It's also Groundhog Day. Now, supposedly, if a groundhog, also known as a woodchuck, and no, I don't know how much wood they could chuck if they could chuck wood, if a groundhog comes out of its burrow and sees its shadow, hello, there are six more weeks of winter ahead. Since 1887, the so-called official groundhog lives at Gobbler's Knob in Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania. His name is Punxsutawney Phil. It's thought that this whole thing started much earlier than 1887 in the Middle Ages in Europe. Back then, people thought animals like bears and badgers interrupted their hibernation to check on the weather. When immigrants from Germany moved to Pennsylvania, they brought this idea with them. So does it work? Punxsutawney Phil's fans say he's never been wrong. Encyclopedia Britannica begs to differ. It says Phil has about a 40% success rate. What? By the way, it's also National Marmot Day. Marmots are these rodents who generally live in rocky, treeless areas like high altitudes or the far north. Groundhogs are actually a type of marmot, like an oversized marmot. They're the only marmots that live at lower elevations. And while most of the high altitude marmots are very social and they live in, in colonies and they whistle to each other, groundhogs... Not so much. Which I don't know, but I think it may have something to do with the fact that every February they have a bunch of people standing around staring at them and waiting for them to wake up. (sighs) Alright, time for our final update from the Winter Youth Olympics in South Korea. Remember, these are the Youth Olympics, so all the competitors are between 15 and 18 years old. Yesterday was the end of competition and the closing ceremonies. Team USA ended on a high note, picking up a bronze medal in curling and a silver in men's snowboard halfpipe. Congratulations, Team USA. The next Youth Olympics will be the 2026 Summer Games in Dakar, Senegal. Will you be there? The country of Scotland has some wild, windswept landscapes where animals like deer wildcats and wild boar roam. What it doesn't have, most of the time, are monkeys. Until this week, that is. A monkey named Honshu escaped from a wild animal park and headed into the highlands. The weather in the Scottish highlands in wintertime is a little chilly, but Honshu was ready. He's a Japanese macaque, also known as a snow monkey. He said, cold? Bah, I like cold. He managed to stay one step ahead of the search parties until yesterday when someone saw him in their backyard eating seeds out of a bird feeder. A team got close enough to Hanshu to get him with a tranquilizer dart, and the dart made Hanshu fall asleep for a bit. When he woke up, he was safely back at home. Zoologists think Hanshu made a break for it, not because he doesn't like where he's living, but because he was trying to avoid getting into a fight with another monkey. No word yet on whether or not they're friends again. Time for today's riddle. Yesterday's was, I'm easy to lift, but hard to throw. What am I? Answer, a feather. Today's riddle, breaks but never falls, falls but never breaks. What is it? Answer, on Monday. In the weather today, that atmospheric river is moving over the Rocky Mountains, bringing rain and snow. The temperatures along the Rocky Mountain front will be cooling down as well, and the winds will be picking up. We may also see some rain and snow here in the Northeast as well. Other than that, not a bad day. Yay! Today, February 2nd, is the birthday, back in 1882, of James Joyce, the great Irish writer. He lived most of his life outside Ireland, but he went back there in his writing, using his memory to help him create his stories. Now, James Joyce's writing sometimes is hard to understand. He played with the language. 
even made words up, and his stories rarely moved in straight lines. He challenged the ideas of what stories were supposed to be, and he used language like he was a magician. One of his most famous books was called Ulysses, and there's a quote in there that says, To learn, one must be humble, but life is the great teacher. And that's the podcast. Thank you very much for listening. Love to hear what you think. If you want to drop me a line, get your grown-up to help and send me an email at kidsmorningnews at gmail.com. And tell your friends about it, too. All right, have a great weekend. I'll be back Monday. From the KMNN Newsroom, this is Alex, signing off. Mm -hmm.